Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakaha Kodash. Double honors as always to the apostles and the elders in the sincere archim of great millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, as well as the sincere salutations as always to the speckled bird, Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is part two of uh, the lesson that I posted yesterday. And I'm titling this one, The Sabbath Day, Part Two, Ordinances, Observations, and regulations all right so the first scripture i wanted to get was in the book of sirach known also known as ecclesiasticus and i believe it's going to be chapter 43 yep and i want to start at verse verse five all right and it reads great is the lord that made it and at his commandment runneth hastily. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of feasts, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. Yeah, so this right here, this scripture gets into the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah, creating the moon. And it gets into the purpose of the moon. And this right here, it lets you know that the moon is how the Hebrew Israelites, for all generations, are to observe times, to observe their months, their days of the week. As well as their holy days, also known as feast days. And, you know, because you have people of the IUIC saying that, you know, the new moon is the full moon and all this other type of crazy stuff. But, you know, there's a few scriptures that I can get on that, too, that I planned on getting. So let me see if I can pull those up. Let me get it in the blue letter. I believe it was Leviticus chapter 23. Right, and I had verse, yep, boom, verse 24. And this is a good one right here for anybody that's, you know, still a little bit confused on, you know, whether it's the new moon or the full moon. <clears throat> speak unto, it's Slovakia, it's Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24, and it reads, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, Shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets and holy convocation? Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offer, so like an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. So this one right here, this particular scripture in the Torah, in the Hebrew, Thawara, meaning the law, it gets into how the first day of the month for the seventh month is the feast of trumpets and if you pay attention if you check hebrew days start in the evening they start from evening and they go from evening to day so if you were to check the sky at that time you would see that it's a new moon so that lets you know that if you're in the seventh month in the first day it's going to be a new moon which lets you know that yes the new moon is how hebrew israelites based times it's how the heavenly father based times we're meant to be holy as he's holy so that is that kills the whole and that cuts the whole the full moon is the new moon no because if you were to celebrate the passover which is the 14th day of the first month the 14th day and the 15th day are always going to be on a full moon and that lets you know you're at the middle point of any month that you're in according to the Hebrew calendar that the Heavenly Father gave us. So right now, effective last night, Saturday night, it was a new moon. So a new Sabbath has been set for this month, 
last night started the first day of the ninth month. And we also have a, a new Sabbath, a new weekly Sabbath set. So now it's going to be Saturday evening to Sunday evening for the Sabbaths for the remainder of this month, which is the ninth month. So for anyone who's, you know, new to the faith and wondering and they've been listening in and they hear it from, you know, they heard from lone wolf Israelites or just all types of other different Israelite camps about the Sabbath being this day or that day. And a lot of them are saying Friday sundown, Saturday sundown. Then this right here cuts that whole notion because you have scriptures letting you know that the Lord based times off of the moon. And like I just got in the book of Sirach for chapter 43, the scripture had said that pertaining to the moon <clears throat> from the moon is the sign of feasts, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. Yeah. And decreasing in her perfection, meaning that, you know, with the moon, you have a waxing period and you have a waning period. When the moon is waxing, you see more of it. You see the moon being, you see the more silver part of the moon or the golden part of the moon or the blood red part of the moon. It just depends on, you know, what's going on, whether you're going to have a blood moon or a regular full moon, quarter moon, so forth and so on. When it decreases the waning period, that means you start to see more dark. Like if you see a half moon, the moon will be half dark, half light. If you see a crescent moon, you'll see a crescent part of the moon. You'll see a light that's in the shape of a crescent. And if it's new, if it's a new moon, that's why even when we were in grade school, pretty sure a lot of us learned this in grade school when they got into moon cycles. They always showed us that the new moon was when the moon was completely black, if not mostly black, where you barely see any light. So that's how you know that this scripture is applying to the new moon being the starting point that sets the days and the weeks. And it sets times for everything else that a Hebrew is like is going to do from the feast days to the Sabbath set for the weekly Sabbath, everything. It lets you know all of that. <coughs> Salakia. All right, let me pull out the next scripture I wanted to get, and it was Exodus 16 and verse 23. All right, here we go. All right, Exodus chapter 16, verse 23, and it reads, And he said unto them, This is that which Yahweh hath said tomorrow, Salaki so like had said, tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto Yahweh. Bake that which ye will bake today and see that which <coughs> so like seethe that ye will seethe and that which remaineth overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. <coughs> Let me read that last part again. It might have been confusing the way I read it. So like and that which remaineth so like it, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning all right and what else did i want to get verse 24 and they laid it up till the morning as moses bade and it did not stink neither was there any worm therein and moses said eat that today for today is a Sabbath unto Yahweh. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. <coughs> and it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. And Yahweh said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. <clears throat> right. And that might have been a little long winded. But the point that I wanted to get by reading those particular verses in the book of Exodus was expressing the point of 
the ordinances of the Sabbath and the regulations. You're not supposed to do any work. And knowing when the Sabbath is coming up, it was important for our fathers in ancient times and even for us right now to make provision for the Sabbath. Meaning if you know that you're not supposed to light a fire, if you know you're not supposed to cook and do all of these various things on the Sabbath, you're not supposed to do any servile work. You do your best within your means to make provision. You make sure that you have enough food and stuff that will last you through the Sabbath day, the period in which you're not supposed to cook and do any servile work and so forth and so on. So you won't have to worry about violating the Sabbath. All right. So also another point that just came to me in the spirit while I while I was going through that point was how are you going to possibly do this if you don't know how to keep the Sabbath? How are you going to do this if you don't know how to observe the moon and which cycles of the moon denote a Sabbath? Which cycles of the moon clearly indicate when the Sabbath is supposed to be? How are you going to do that? You know, because for anybody telling you that the full moon is the new moon, that's obviously going off. And I do believe Elder Apostle Tahar, he got into he got into that probably a few months back. I would say maybe even five to seven months back. He got into it about how that couldn't be the case when IUIC came out saying it because the Elder Apostles, they had kept the Passover. They kept the Passover this year in the video that I've seen. And to keep the Passover, the Passover is typically it's always supposed to be on the 14th day in the first month. And like you can see just off of observing the moon cycles and reading the scriptures, the 14th day or the 15th day are always going to be a full moon. So that being the case, the proof is going to be right there. You'll be looking up in the sky seeing a perfectly bright moon. And listening to Nate, you'll be thinking, oh, well, you know, it's time to keep the set. How? <laughs> you know, it's just... It's just obvious things that like if the spirit's not dealing with you, you won't get. And if you just follow in cult of personality, being a respecter of persons, which is off, according to the scriptures. Then essentially you're going to go for fried ice cream. You're going to go for anything, man. Like, you know, that's why it's important to study to show thyself approved. All right. And the next one I wanted to get was Exodus chapter 31. Verse 14. All right. Cool. All right. And this one right here, this gets more into more of the ordinances and regulations for the Sabbath. I'm going to start at verse 12. And it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths, Salakia, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. That ye may know that I am Yahweh that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is a holy, so like for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may day, so like it, six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to Yahweh, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. For a perpetual covenant. Verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, Yahweh made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. All right. And that's basically the point that I wanted to get right there. And that last verse gets into the point that I made in my previous video, in part one of the Sabbath day video, where I said that just reflecting and meditating on the Sabbath. One of the things I meditate on is the fact of the Lord through the Allah creating everything within a six day period, you know, six days to him, 6,000 years human time and then rested in on his seventh day, seven days to him, 7,000 years human time. So he gave us an earthly equivalent of that. So as to, as a spiritual way of fellowshipping with him and, you know, 
him supping with us. It's a perpetual covenant between the children of Israel and the Heavenly Father. The children of Israel being the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, according to the Holy Scriptures. And according to history, if you if you learned enough. But, you know, that's another topic for another time. A lot of the elders get into that, you know, proving who we are. Not because they have to, but because it's all about edifying the body. It's not for naysayers. If you don't believe it, you don't believe it. You know, if you're not getting it, you know, kick rocks, move on. If you are sincere, though, the Holy Spirit will sup with you and you will get it in due time. But, yeah, this right here shows that the Sabbath day is a perpetual covenant between the children of Israel forever. And this also gets into the severity of the Sabbath as well as the ordinances and the regulations. And, you know, the observations, of course. This part more so on, like, the ordinances and the regulations because it shows how serious it was. You weren't supposed to do any work and you doing work, getting caught doing work. You were, it was lawful to put you to death. And that's where we apply Yahweh Shah in this captivity because we can't keep the laws 100%. And Yahweh Shah knew that. One of the ways in which, you know, that was made known unto me was when I read the, I believe it was the passage about the rich young ruler. Let me get that real quick so I don't butcher it. I guess it doesn't pop up like that. Bear with me. Salakia. I'll get it in the blue letter app. All right, let me see. It's going to be Matthew. I believe it's chapter. This type of shit tested. Cast out demons. Oh. <laughs> Salakia. I made it way more difficult, man. I was working hard, not smarter. Salakia. I got it. Here we go. Matthew chapter 19. And I want to start at verse 16. The rich young ruler is the subtext. And it says, and it reads, And behold, one came... And said unto him, Good master, what thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So like that I may have eternal life. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is the most high. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which Yahweh Shai said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Yahweh shall said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard, that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions now i kind of read a little bit more than i wanted to but the main point that i wanted to get was in verses 18 and 19 notice basically lord yahweh shah he gave him a few of the ten commandments he gave him most of them i believe he gave them he gave him let me see thou shalt not do murder that's one thou shalt not commit adultery two thou shalt not steal three Thou shalt not bear false witness. Four, honor thy father and thy mother. Five, love thy neighbor as thyself. All right. So, Lord Yahweh, I gave him roughly six commandments. But notice one of the original Ten Commandments, the fourth one was honor the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why didn't Lord Yahweh mention it right here? Because Lord Yahweh knew that we would eventually, there would be a falling away first. And in the last days, we would need the grace of Lord Yahweh Shai because we can't keep the Sabbath perfectly, especially in a captivity. It was a lot of us, you know, who couldn't keep it perfectly under the first covenant. They had a better chance than we did because, you know, they were more sovereign back then. But, you know, in Babylon the Great, there's a lot of things you can't do, even down to keeping the dietary laws. There's many 
many aspects of the law that we cannot keep and we would all be dead without Yahweh Shah's sacrifice, without his grace covering us within this grace period. So this is this doesn't mean once again, I'm not gonna say in any of these videos at any point in my walk, Adawan Ratazah, I'm not gonna say don't keep the Sabbath. I'm gonna say keep it to the best of your ability. But the reason why Lord Yahweh Shah didn't put that on him, what I'm what I can understand through the spirit is the Sabbath day, there's regulations for it that conflict with the laws of the land you know to each their own everyone every brother every sister's situation in their circumstances is different some have the ability to take off whenever they want to if they have a business that they own that they've established to a point where they can do that where they you know not in the, the building stages of it or what have you but for most of us we can't do that and that's where grace applies if you can do what that's fine but lord yahweh shah the point of his ministry was, you know, preaching the kingdom of heaven. And the point of his sacrifice was redeeming Israel back to the heavenly father and also opening up the grace period before we get into the new covenant where within the grace period, we rehearse the righteous acts. So that's all we're doing. I believe the apostles and elders get into that a lot. We're just rehearsing the righteous acts. So we do the best we can to keep these commandments so we can show the heavenly father that we have faith in him despite where we are. All right. Now I wanted to get to the next scripture and it was going to be Exodus 34. And I believe I have verse 21. OK, this time around, I'm going to get it on the app. Exodus 34 and verse 21. That way I can get it in the KJV as well as the NLT, because both of these translations are going to serve a purpose. All right. Exodus chapter 34, verse 21, and it reads, Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest, in earing time, and in harvest thou shalt rest. All right. So, let me make sure that that was it. Yep. And I'm going to get it in the NLT, which is to the right, as you can see. And it reads, You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But on the seventh day, you must stop working, even during the seasons of plowing and harvest. Yeah, so that lets you know that's right there. That's another ordinance for the Sabbath. That's another regulation. Even when it's like, say like if you have land, even when it's like, even when the harvest is plentiful and bountiful and, you know, you can have a fruitful harvest. If it's the Sabbath day, you don't plow. You don't do any of that. You rest. That's the, these are the regulations for the Sabbath. Now, once again, all this has to be applied with discernment and, you know, the spirit. You have to understand, like, what what applies to you. Like, if you don't have land, OK. It, it doesn't apply to you in that context, but the servile work, at, the do no servile work aspect of the Sabbath still does apply to you. So if it's the Sabbath and you have to work, you know, pray to Yahweh for grace and mercy. If you have the means to not work on the Sabbath, then you don't work on the Sabbath. If it's a regular job, you just don't work on the Sabbath. So that's what I wanted to get into with that one. Get into the ordinance again. And I did also have. Right. OK. Yep. That's what I wanted to get. All right, let me get Psalms 81 and verse 3. This one gets into observation. Psalms 81, verse 3, and it reads, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the power of Jacob. All right. So this lets you know right here, the new moon. Once again, it's the new moon is the first day of a Hebrew month. It's not the full moon. So if you listen to Nate, he got you lost in the sauce. If you listen to IUIC when it comes to this, you lost in the sauce. And because we're supposed to search the scriptures and prove all things, let's get new moon right here in the Strong's Concordance. All right. 
right here. And it says Strong's age twenty three twenty. Chodesh. Chodesh. That's the Yiddish way of pronouncing it, but in the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashwan Kadash, the pure Tzalaki, the Lashwan Kwadash, the pure tongue, it's Cha Dash. Cha Dash. And Hebrew's read from right to left. So Cha, the Da, and the Sha. But once you get that last letter, you drop the ah sounds. You can connect them. So it's Chadash. And what does it mean? The new moon. Month. Monthly. The first day of the month. The lunar month. That's a cut to the IUIC doctrine. That's a cut to anybody who's talking about either the new moon is the full moon or that the Sabbath is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. The Sabbath is not every Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. The only way it could be a Friday sundown or Saturday sundown is if the new moon came on a Friday night. Because the new moon will come on a Friday night and it's likened unto a Sabbath. And once it ended Saturday night, that would be the end of your Sabbath right there. And then for the rest of that month, whatever month it might be, whether it's the fourth month, the fifth month, the sixth month, whatever month it might be. That's your Sabbath for the remainder of that month. So for the remainder, let's say, for example, the fifth month, when the fifth month started, the first day of the fifth month, the new moon landed on what we would call in this calendar Friday night. For the rest of that month, your Sabbath would be Friday night to Saturday night. Let's say we get to the sixth month and the new moon falls on what we call in this calendar a Tuesday. That would mean for the rest of that month on the sixth month, your Sabbath is Tuesday evening to Wednesday evening. That's how that works. And as far as the working day aspect of the Sabbath. I wanted to get that in this new moon calendar that I have. All right. All right. As we can see right here. You can see that Saturday had Saturday yesterday last night was the new moon. So right there you see new moon. Sometimes this calendar goes off. I noticed that the apostles and the elders, they'll get it right before the calendars get it right. It just depends on, you know, how, you know, how people do it. Not whoever operates the app, whatever. But you can see new moon. October 14th on a Saturday so I can simplify it the best way I can. So that would mean for the rest of this month, the Sabbath is going to be Saturday evening to Sunday evening. The new moon counts as day one, as we already seen right there in the blue letter. So you have the 14th of October Gregorian calendar. As far as the Gregorian calendar is concerned, but as far as Hebrew Israelites are concerned, it's day one. It's the first day of the ninth month for this year. So you have the new moon. Let's count that as day one. The 15th is day two. The 16th, day three. 17th, day four. 18th, day five. 19th, day six. 20th, day seven. The 21st, day 8. And these are your overall 8 days of that month. But if you're counting working days, you don't count the new moon. You count it from the evening of the 15th. So that would be, right here was highlighted, the 15th. Let's count the evening from, from, the, time, from the time the moon comes out. The 15th, one working day. The 16th two working days, the 17th, three working days, the 18th, four working days, the 19th, five working days, the 20th, six working days. And then you get to the 21st, which is the seventh day. So that's your Sabbath, which correlates to the new moon that you see right above it on the calendar. You see the 14th says new moon and you see the 21st is right below it. So that 
is a that should be a good enough visual to let you know how the new moon correlates to the Sabbath. They're one and the same. The new moon dictates the Sabbath. And the new moon day, the new moon itself is likened unto a Sabbath. So the same regulations would apply. So that right there lets you know you can track your Sabbaths that way, based off of the new moon, not the full moon. You see full moon right here where it says October 28th. That's when the moon is completely bright. You can see whatever it's going to be. If the moon's going to be silver, if it's going to be gold, if it's going to be blood moon, you're going to see the whole thing. That's the full moon. I don't know who needs to go back to school, but a full moon and a new moon are two opposite things. The moon decreases in her perfections as we got in the book of Sirach, chapter 43. So there's no way the full moon and the new moon could be the same. Those are two different moon cycles. You know, you might as well say the sun and the moon are the same thing, man. But hey, look, if you're following Nate and IUIC and you don't study the scriptures, you're going to go for anything. And the same can be applied for any person you follow. Nate can just be used as an example because he gets away with saying the most outlandish stuff and he has one of the biggest Israelite congregations. But, you know, it's not about numbers because the scriptures already says broadly to the damnation. So for the hopeful elect that's in IUIC, repent, get up out of there, come back to the 144% truth, man. Because it's too late in the game to be swayed by every wind of doctrine if you can help it. And I had two more scriptures I wanted to get and I'm going to get up off of this thing right here. So, 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 23. I messed up right there. I didn't put Kings. Okay, here we go. Boom. 2 <clears throat> Kings, chapter 4. And I want to start at verse 18. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18, and it reads, And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when she, Salaki, and when he had taken him, and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, then died. So like it, and then died. And she and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him, and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men. And one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to like it? Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And he said, It shall be well. So like it. And she said, It shall be well. All right. And the point that I wanted to get right there is. Why did her husband in verse 23 say. It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. Let me get that in the with the NLT translation as well. All right, Second Kings chapter four, verse twenty-three in the NLT, and it reads: This is the part where the husband spoke. He said, and it reads: Why go today? He asked. It is neither a new moon festival nor a Sabbath. And she said, It will be all right. Why is that? Because we're supposed to blow the trump pursuant to Psalms, the 81st chapter and the third verse. We're supposed to blow the trumpet when the new moon comes out because the new moon announces a new month. It serves two purposes. It announces the first day of a new month as we got in the Strong's Concordance when we got the word Chadash. And it also sets your Sabbath for that month so that lets you know right there the new moon and the sabbath go hand in hand not the full moon and the sabbath and not friday to saturday just because saturday and sabbath begin with s doesn't mean it has doesn't mean they're synonymous with each other the new moon dictates the sabbath 
All right. So that's for anybody that's been confused by listening to a bunch all these wayward Israelites. They just say and do anything, man. At this point, it's all about money for a lot of these dudes. And that's it's getting to be real irritating. But you know, it's part of prophecy, so that's just me personally thinking. The last scripture I wanted to give was Book of Isaiah, chapter 58. And I wanted to get verse 13. And the subtext is keeping the Sabbath. And it reads, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the aunt, so like it, the holy of Yahweh, honorable and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of Yahweh hath spoken it. Yeah, and this is beautiful right there. That's the spirit, because that goes into what I got into in the last video. And it gets into the aspect that I mentioned about, like, Sabbath meditations that I myself personally get into, which is like the Sabbath is a sign that the Heavenly Father gave to us. And... In the book of Genesis and even in the book of Exodus, it shows you that he gave it to us as a sign and we can use it as a, also using as a memorial that the heavenly father created the earth in a six day period to him. Six thousand years for us. And on the sec and the Salaki and on the seventh day, seven thousand period for us, he rested. So that's a meditation that I get into a lot myself, you know, like he he did that. Like the Heavenly Father really did that. And he gave us a sign. You know, he could just leave us in the dark like the heathen nations with all these crazy creation stories they got. Like, you know, shoot, uh, Matazari and the so-called Egyptians had a story where they, with their creation deity, he basically, you know, ejaculated everything into existence. You know, Ham got a lot of weird traditions, but, you know, the Heavenly Father gave us what we needed. He gives us everything we need unto salvation. And, Whatever he gives us that's just interesting, it's a blessing. And we should really thank him for it because he doesn't have to tell us anything. He really doesn't. But this right here gets into understanding that the Sabbath is indeed a way for us to connect to the Heavenly Father. And not only that, on a spiritual level, it physically is supposed to be something that we do where we rest from the everyday hustle and bustle of working on the plantation and just everything else that we might do because you know how it is getting caught up in Babylon and just the earthly stuff in general. Like it's always something to do. It's either a bill that has to be paid or you got to go and get this certificate or you got to go and get this. You got to go get that. You got to get this before something expires. It's a bunch of hustle and bustle and it's, it, it's easy. It's easy for you to get away from the heavenly father. Because you'll be wondering, okay, yeah, well, the Lord says this, but if I don't do this and such and such, you know. So I just I just appreciate the Sabbath, me personally, because it gives me time to reflect time that I don't get to reflect when I'm, you know, while being in the world and stuff like that. But, yeah, this is what I wanted to get right here. I wanted to get more into the Sabbath, because I know, like, even myself personally, I was confused until Elder Yashawamba. I saw his videos breaking down how to track the Sabbath and stuff like that on his channel. Uh, Remnant Saved 144. Subscribe and be edified. And that's all I wanted to get for right now. I'll probably have another video later on pertaining the Sabbath or another topic that I had. I got a few. But I want to make sure that I get my study in there so I don't tell anybody wrong because it's important to feed the flock with the proper food, which is the 100% doctrine. And I won't deal with anything that's above my strength. I don't want to write this off. So hopefully that was edifying to the hopeful elect listening. Whenever you might get this, all praises, honor, glory is due to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah HaKwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elder bishops, and the sincere Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily. Who are the apostles and elders of great milk so like of all israel whether you can accept it or not and the sincere salutations as always to the speckled bird israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen kwam yasharala and ababa ball
Shabbat Shalom.